folks, I'm in St. Augustine at St. Augustine Paddle Sports in Florida, and I'm with David Hernandez and Bart Swab. And we're getting on the water tomorrow, right guys? Yes, we are. All right, and we're gonna be testing out, what you got here, man? Oh, uh, we got the brand new um, Kaku Zulu. Just came out this week. Nice. It's a pedal craft, but we're gonna put it to the test with the um, Torquedo. Cool. Yeah, Show me the, the steering setup that, uh, that you came up with here. Okay, so it has a very robust um, steering um, steering mechanism here. Um, most brands have uh, some type of cable, and this is that's a, a cable and a half. Yeah, steel okay. steel cable. So it's not gonna um, it's not gonna give at all. This is an example. This is how the steering goes. Very cool. Yes. Awesome. So what are we uh, what are we fishing for tomorrow, guys? So this time of year is a lot of um, fish biting. Um, trout bites been good, of course. The sheep's head are here. Right. Um, reds are here all year long. Um, black drum around the cats this time of year. So tomorrow we're gonna um, go to a creek out of the wind. Tomorrow's gonna be a rough day. It's only 17 mile per hour wind, so we're gonna find a spot. 17 miles per hour. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. All right. We're here, getting ready to launch, and uh, David's picked up a couple baits, and we want to go over some of the, just the rigging and different bait options for the different species out here. Okay. What you got, man? So this time of year, I think it's a, a great time of, of year to be fishing. Um, when it co gets colder here in Florida, um, in North Florida, a lot of different species come in. One of the, the best, uh, most sought out um, species is uh, sheep's head. Uh, they're primarily caught on filler crabs. We also have. Now you're gonna go to the bottom. Let him get away. Yeah. <laughs> we also have once you see them because they look weird. If you come up. Get back here. Is on um, the sand flea. Here it goes. It's another sort after. Bait. Okay. It looks. They call them a sad flea, but it's actually a crab. Yep. Mole crab. We have these up um, up my way, up Mid Atlantic, Delaware, Virginia, Maryland beaches. They're just right in the surf. You just uh, yeah. They're awesome to catch. They're. Um, I think live is the best way to use these. We sell them frozen in our shop also. We catch tartog on them. Us. Uh, yeah. So yep. yeah, and that's just um, sheep's head is the same way as you fish for tartog. Okay. Um, I was as a kid. We used to catch them in New York. They caught them blackfish there. Yep. Um, nice. So another species that, that the bite, they're here all year long, but the bite picks up in the cold weather is the sea trout. Okay. Um, so I like to target them with uh, like a paddle tail or curly tail. Um, that's a swimmer trout trick by um, Z-Man, which we carry in our shop. A local um, guy named Sean Hackney makes these baits. They call the, um, this one's called a belly shad. It comes in three and a half and four and a half. The trout love these and the red, so I've been using this lately. And then another one I like to use by Hackney is um, curly tail grub. Trout like that action in the water, so you'll catch a, we'll probably catch a bunch of those today. Um, another um, species good to target this time of year: black drum, small hook, fresh dead or frozen bait. You know. So you got shrimp there? Yeah, this is shrimp. So. Okay. Um, Cover the hook, drop it down there, and you'll catch some black trout and right. black drum. Um, I like to use um, cut mullet or live mullet today. It's cold out, so I didn't want to be cast netting, so I brought some frozen mullet to use. Right. You can use it whole or chunk it. Um, another good bait to, to use this time of year. Um, what else is here? A mangrove snapper you can catch also. They're, they're small fish. You got to catch them over 10 inches. You catch those with um, fresh dead. They bite everything, really. So, um, and you had some live, yeah. Live, so, uh, so we also use uh, shrimp, you know, live shrimp, and we also use a local bait, um, mud minnow. Yep, a little killer. This, this is a little one here in my shop. We, we call them Hulk minnows. I can't grab one right now, but they're usually big, almost the size of a mullet. And then we got a bunch of fresh dead, everything bites shrimp. So, okay. I bring that all the time because if nothing else is biting, you usually get a bite on some shrimp. Nice. So, and how are we rigging them? So, um, the, what I like to use the most is jig head. Yeah. Simple old jig head. Just, okay. just the weight. 
for the depth of the water or, or the uh, um, current. But you can use this with live bait, dead bait. You can switch all kind of plastics on this. So nice. Um, great versatile thing to use. I like to keep it simple. But um, other baits are good this um, the time of year. Top water or, or type of crank baits for for trout, that type of thing. Okay. Um, this time of year is usually easy fishing. Let's get to it. All right, let's do it. Forgot to mention this is a program we started here um, in in the um, St. John's County area. It's called Up to You. It's up to you to keep our, our waters our waters clean. So you know you see plastics every time you go out on the water or, or at the launches. Do your part to clean up. We, we gave an extra incentive at, at St. Augustine Power Sports. Every time you go out, if you fill the bag, you send us a picture, you get a raffle ticket. At the end of the month, you can win a $25 gift card. So your, nice. your, your efforts could pay off also. Yeah, All right. very cool. So it's up to you. Like David got the first one. What'd you get? What'd he hit? I told you. The what is it? The hackney? There's a hackney belly shot. Three okay. And a half inch. Nice. Little guy. You just trolling it, huh? Yeah. This time of year is easy to um, catch. Um, so you were doing that. Under power of the motor and yes, just sir. just dragging it behind you. Yeah, and I, I was trying to find the right speed to go to, and I slowed down, and bam, I got a hit. Nice. What so, was the speed? Uh, I was going like I guess it was about two miles an hour. Okay. Nice. And you got shrimp in there, or no, no. which which you, which bait you think? You think there's some reds in this hole? Yes, we usually catch reds on, in this hole. I'm gonna try it right now because the tide's still coming in. It's usually a better outgoing. Okay. I figured we'd give it a try because we're gonna try the next bend. You see that beautiful house over there? That yeah. wall on that house? Yeah. We're gonna try sheep's head over there. Cool. All right. That's so, where we use the fiddler crabs. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. The fiddler crabs and the sand fleas. So, so what do you got here to use? I got shrimp to use here, live shrimp, and okay. some live mud minnows. All right. So just reach in there. Just reach in there. See what I get. You want to use? Yeah. Looks like I got a shrimp. You know what? Well, and I'll try it. How are we hooking these guys? So you can go through the horn, or you can go through the last digit on the tail. You want them to be able to. Um, What's the horn? The head? Yes. So if you look up the head, look. So see? Look. Hold on. Let me get this. You look on the You're going to show the camera. You so look on the shrimp. You see how it has a horn there? Yeah. You got to watch that. There's, oh. a, there's also one look. It's also another spike at the tail. Yeah. So when they're being attacked or whatever, that's what they do. Yeah. You ever see how they have that weird movement? They're trying to hit you with both of these like that. Huh. That's what they do. That's their defensive mechanism. That's their, yeah, yeah, that's the defense. Or if something okay. bites them there, it sticks them in the mouth. So what I usually do, let me show you. So either I go through the last digit like this. Yeah. So it lets the shrimp jump like they not normally do. Yeah. I use that mostly with, with jig heads. If I'm using a popping cork sometimes, I'll go through, see there's right a across. spot right across right there. So you go right across underneath the... The front of that, where yep. the base of that thing is there, and that gives them movement. But that's okay. good for when it's floating, that type of thing. Yeah. Sometimes I'll switch back and forth. So I got a jig head, so let me put it through the through the tail. Through the last digit, yeah. Yep. Let's get a more lively shrimp. All right. So, yeah. All right, let me do it. You want to do it? Yep, I got him. So one of the hazards that I should say of owning a bait shop is when you're serving bait, you get pricked every day. Every day by them. The bigger the shrimp, the more it hurts. Sometimes um, it breaks off in your skin. Which um, starts to cause it to inflame. You'll know in a couple of days that you still got a piece in there all right i hooked it through that last little digit he was flipping there a second ago two oh yeah he's wiggling in there yeah he's alive all right
Cool. And are we moving it? Are we? Just... So I, I usually throw it out, let it sit there a minute, see if there's anything biting. Sometimes they'll just take it like that. Um, and if now you start slowly bringing it back, good way to catch flounder that way. If they're laying there, you find out where they're at. Okay. Flounder bites usually like a thump. You feel like you're hung up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sometimes you let it sit there like that because flounder will mouth it. They'll play with it. Yeah. They'll you know? get your bait before they'll take you your can... bait. Yeah. So you got to kind of be patient and let them eat it till they get down to the hook. Okay. They'll even lay on top of the bait, holding it. Yeah. And then they scoop back and that's how and then they'll eat it. Really? Sometimes they'll 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 eat the bait and then they'll come up a little. And you won't feel it. Yeah, they're giving you they give you slack. Yeah, man, they're a tricky fish to catch. <laughs> Sometimes with the tide moving like this, you throw it out, it'll bounce with the tide. Yeah. So I usually I'd try I usually try to get it close to the grass. That's where the fish will feed unless okay. there's a little trough there. Got something on the yeah. On the um, shrimp. I got catfish. Catfish. So I got another bite on that last bin, but we decided, and I, I lost my shrimp. Um, we just moved down one bend. We're just looking at these bends going back, and I guess you just know from experience that, uh, you know, which of these produces. Um, I'm trying. I feel like I'm walleye fishing up north. <laughs> <laughs> I got the mud minnow on the jig head. So we'll give that a shot. It's just a little killer fish. We call them Hulk minnows here. Hulk minnows. <laughs> That's the name I gave at the shop. Yeah. We tend to have the biggest um, muds in town. Yeah. So we call them Hulk minnows. Makes them sound even bigger. <laughs> He's stout. He's a fat, fat headed doodle. Sometimes they're so big, man, they look like the finger, they look like finger mullet. Yeah. So where I got bit, where I caught the catfish, was out in the middle. Do you do better with the reds and the, and the trout and the flounder closer to the grass or what so again like so on this corner here you gotta know where the fish are going kind of like their highway yeah right? yep so the closer you can get to that grass yeah i'm right on it cats. okay cats. and just leave it on the grass yeah leave it right there yeah okay sweet Yes, yes. Oh, it's a nice red. That was on your your Hulk minnow. The Hulk they smashed the fish, man. Jeff can't go back saying I didn't put him on no fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome, man. He's got that real pretty blue tail. Yeah. So they get that from eating crabs and stuff, crustaceans. Depending on the water and time of year, the, the, the reds change color. Like Sometimes, like, Early fall, they look like bronze or orange. Yeah. Little trout ski, yes. Ah, he just flung the. <laughs> the minnow came out and hit me. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> did you get a good trout? Song. Hackney, bro, that hackney. Hitting the, time. hitting the surface behind you. What you got, man? Redfish. 
And that was on the, you get that one on the shrimp? I got that on the shrimp, so we'll switch it to a shrimp. Used to make jigs, and this is one of the jigs he used to make. It's a circle jig. It's good to use for charters and stuff like that. And yeah. It hooks themselves, type of thing. I use it a lot on live bait. Nice. Especially when I just leave my rod sitting. Yeah. But yeah. Beautiful little specimen here. Nice. Trout. That's where all the trout are. Nice. Now we're getting them. You think it just picks up with the right tide or? Yeah. I told you earlier, this is like, to me, this is an outgoing tide. Thing. Yeah. So we've caught a number of fish here on this this bend. Let's take a look at it on the uh, on the chart here. Um, you know we're positioned on the inside of this of this turn here, and the current initially we were catching them along that outer edge, but it's it's changed to where you're catching them a little bit more straight straight down current, right? Yes. You got that big trout almost back on this edge behind us, but. Um, so anywhere these these bends, I guess we have the um, the change. You know, the the current seems and just places once the current starts ripping for them to uh, to ambush. You know, whatever they're eating, whether it's the shrimp or minnows or whatever. So so you got a place further down to to go after the sheep's head. Yes, right around this bend, there's a. Big wall there. You could what, do you, what do you look for structurally for, so for, for that sheep, kind of fish? For sheep's head, you, you, you're going to look for some type of um, piling, uh, like a bridge or a dock. Um, so something made with rocks that have barnacles and crabs living along them. Right. That's, that's where they feed at. Nice. So, um, okay. Great fish to target. They're a challenge. They're, they, they call them convicts because they're bait stealers. <laughs> yeah. They tap, tap, and you know, suck in the bait. Right. So it's kind of a, you gotta learn that feel. You lose a lot before you catch, but. Yeah. Awesome challenge and uh, great eating fish, so. Cool. Let's try to Let's get some. Let's head down there and yeah. check it out. All right. All right, so we're gonna move across from the point we were just fishing to the opposite shore. I wanna show you uh, what what David knew setting up on, on this spot and casting to the other. Uh, we're gonna look at the the depth finder as we as we we're gonna motor across. And you can see that that channel drop off really crisply. And then as we come back up into the into the grass, you can see it come right back up. So that's I think what he was trying to convey is that you you have a little bit of a highway here where the fish move in and out and that shoreline didn't have much but this one you know certainly did because it it was flat and then dropped down a little bit and then dropped down really sharp and then came back up and then you're right in the grass so we were dropping it in that channel that's where we were catching fish outside bend outgoing tide all right I'm gonna catch up with him looks like he's he set up where the uh, sheep's head are. See if I can catch a couple of those then. Okay, so this is a good sheep's head spot. Um, well, I should say used to. I haven't been here in a while, but someone took over this property and they redid all this. Yeah. So usually, like I said, you want barnacles and all that, but you can see a lot of this is clean. Right. It's a new new dock, so new new um, bulkhead here. So see, like old. Yeah, you want something gnarly, Crunchy. nasty, all kind of stuff on them, barnacles, oystery, that type of stuff is, is, is where they hang out. Right. Um, I think I got one bite a second ago. Um, uh, we can give it a try here a little bit more. It's another outside going. bend. It just has bulkhead instead of, you know, that that channel along the grass grass edge back there. So there's good redfish catching here, too. Yeah. Um, last time I was here, sheep said fishing, I had a line out behind me over here and caught a nice big slot red. So, um, good spot. There used to be trees falling in here, all that type of structure. Right. They cleaned a lot of it out. So, we'll so see So, we're going to use the fiddler crab? Can so I yes. use this jig head? Or yeah, what you can I use, use that jig head, but I want to give you something that we use here locally. Okay. All right. So, there's a, a company here called um, Real Habit Jigs. 
Um, Chris Cochran um, is the uh, owner of that that company. Uh, so he designed these 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 jigs where it's a uh, um, it's this, a swing head. Yes, it's like a swing head with so, a with a real short like a really stout octopus hook. Yes. Okay. So that's this is the first gen. I don't have any of the other ones. I, I didn't bring my other tackle box. The second gen has the, see the football. Yeah. It's the shape of the the fiddle crab. Okay. So you see how the body of the fiddle crab is? Yeah. That's how the 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 new ones are. Okay. Sometimes you'll get the um they'll hit the the weight thinking it's a fiddle crab. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So huh. um but yeah. So I gave you one, right? You gave me one. Yes. Um I'm gonna I'm just tr having trouble holding here and you're you actually um, I'm going to show this in a second. You used your your fish grip to to hold, hold on. The, yes, the bulkhead. That's a brilliant idea. Yes, and um, I I ha haven't got it in the mail, but last week I was talking with um, um, Bill Bragman from Yacht Gear. Yeah, and he's sending me some. Um, they're called brush grippers. Okay, and they use them for the mangroves yep. and stuff like that. Or, yep, duck hunters but, use them. Yes, it's like it almost looked like oversized um, battery. Uh, yep. Yeah, when you, when for you, battery for jump cables. Starts. Yeah, yep. for the jump starts. They look kind of like that. So I got two of those coming, and I'm going to give that a try instead of using the, the fish grip. That looks like it's but it, yeah, good. Yeah, I've been job. doing this for, for years now. It works pretty good. I usually bring Here. more than one fish grip for that reason. Let's take a look. It's a, it's a smart. So you have it attached here, and you got that cord, and it's just running right up to the fish grip. Sometimes I'll choke up on it and make it smaller, but over here I'm being a little loose, but yeah. Good idea. It's a good way. And two, I mean, um, fishing docks like that, you're not supposed to touch people's docks. Right. So it's an easy way to, <laughs> to unhook like, it and get away. Now. Yeah, I'm not touching anything, you know. <laughs> if they do come, you can get off easier. So. Right. So we moved to a different area, and I've already had one bite, and I actually had one break off. Um, in this riprap on this high bank that people have put those those rocks in and those little wing dams you've been catching what'd you get a mangrove snapper yes i caught two of them okay um but this is another good area for the sheep's head yes because the current and the rocks yes this whole area is all lined with rocks on the bottom so cool they feed on the crabs along that structure i'm gonna pull up above you Gotta get him, man. Yep. <laughs> Actually broke off the other one. On a hook said it was a fish. Uh, so I'm just going back to the the Z-Man. I think it's a trout eye jig head with the fiddler crab on it. <clears throat> tap tap. Gone. Right, get another. Let's get some purple on him. Are you pinching me? I don't blame you. It's like you know what I'm going to do to you. I like this spot. It's kind of neat. Got one. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> Is that him? Yeah, man, that's one. Yay! I caught a sheep's head. These are little bastards have been stealing the bait. <laughs> How cool. So these these eat well. And they got nasty teeth, huh? How big it gotta be to keep them? All right, let's take a look at these teeth. I, I'm looking at the teeth and I understand now how they crush up those crabs and kick them back and, hmm. Very cool. I'm a you feel the tap, you start pulling up slowly to see if you feel the weight. 
if you feel the weight, you set the hook. This one was already chewed on. He's already half munched. There's still enough on there. Got another little guy. I didn't even get him in the mouth. I got him under the chin. <laughs> Tried a little bit different size jig head, a little finer wire, and uh, that seems to be hooking him a little bit better. That's a, it's actually a Ned head. Let's see if this one measures. Yep. That jig head is catching more of them but I think we're gonna go back to catching the reds and the trout here these have been fun though sheep's head Wanna go home yes please <laughs> oh yellow mouth All right, man. It was a good day on the water. Yes, it was, man. Glad you got to catch a bunch yep. of fish. Yeah, I appreciate you taking me out. Uh, my pleasure, man. Look what we caught. <laughs> we got someone's radio. We did the, uh, it's up to you. We got a big bag full of trash. And tire. Somebody's Laptop. Laptop. <laughs> sad, sad we'll be fine out there. I'm glad we started this project so we can yeah. clean up our waterways here and maybe encourage people to do it where they live. Yeah. You know? I, I think, you know, once it gets traction, you know, you get, you know, if there isn't a lot of trash to begin with, people are less likely to leave trash. Yes. So. That's true. Cool. Awesome day. Thanks, yes, David. It was, man. I had a great time, man. Huh?